And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the mother of artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning master acrylic artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. I've lost half my paper. Can you print this out for me again? My uh, paper my got all wet. Hello. 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 <laughs> where are you? What are you talking about? Where what? am I? All right. What do you got going on over here? I've got the paper all wet. Can you print me out another one, please? Uh, black and white. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Keep that because that's the back name. Hey, you want to say hello to the fans? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I got really involved here in my printout, which is a wet piece of paper now, which Somehow there was some water spilled. I don't know. Uh, we apologize to, to Ireland. It's 1.30 a.m. in Ireland right now. We, oh, we apologize. We're sorry. You know, we just uh, got lat back late today. It felt we just... Uh, we but, and we a, missed you guys so much. We had to come yeah, back we had, on. I thought we'd just do a you know live show and whoever came, came. And, you know, sort of to make it fun for those of you who are staying up watching us at live, we have a, we will at the end of the show have another little six by eight, uh, you know, ten minute painting I will do at the end of the show and give away to our uh, participating viewing audience that is the day. How do we say that? <laughs> I keep wanting the ones the ones that are live with us right now. The ones our are, live studio audience. Our live studio audience. Okay, I always wanted to say that. Our live studio audience. Hey, we'd like okay? to thank our live and, studio audience for joining us tonight. And remember, you know, the chat stays up. So what you're, if you know how to chat and you want to chat and ask us questions, be sure to uh, put them in capital letters so we see them if it's a question. And if you're just chatting with the group, uh, it's there for posterity. You've got to watch what you say. Hmm? Your name's <laughs> there, and there you chat. So well, just a little say? thought. Okay, just it, that, I think something you have to always figure is the microphone's always live. I try to figure, you know, kind of remember that because you know. Um, yeah, how, you just, how's that work for you? Not not really well, but <laughs> I, I am cognizant of it. Right there, how's that? So I throw another big word at you. No, that's I. I'm gonna have to get the dictionary out. Okay, so all right. So tonight we thought we would do an old, an old dead guy, somebody you haven't ever heard from of, of before. And uh, in fact, he was kind of new to me, too. I recognized his artwork, but not his name, though it's a pretty easy one, uh, John George Brown. And he was raised in, the, in England and uh, uh, apprenticed as a glass blower, but he was actually an American citizen. And, um, and wait, wait, was, wait. He was born in England? No, he was born in America, but he went, he lived in England. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it said so in the. You can look him up on Wikipedia, and they'll tell you the whole thing, right? They have, they have the, they have all the stuff they, on they these have people. The, they have the details. He painted. He was really into painting boys, you know, all kinds of boys, and this was just a landscape he did. And I'll tell you why I liked it, and why we're going to paint it. It's um, his was probably about uh, 20 by 40, 24, and we're doing it 8 by 10. So I'm not going to put in quite the detail that he did, and we're going to do it in an hour, and he probably did it over several weeks, but. That being said, I liked it because it really is sort of monochromatic. And what we mean by that, it's all in the tones of yellow and gold, and what, which was very pretty. And there's a real feeling of light behind it. I've got an 8x10 canvas that I've painted uh, kind of a light yellow color. And we're going to just, uh, it's mostly trees. It's a waterfall and, and, and a, like a little pond or, you know, holding pond and a few rocks and some leaves. And it's kind of, you got the feeling it's sort of in the fall. That Thank works. you very much. That works just beautifully. Thank you. So anyway, if John would be so kind as to um, scoot on down, to scoot on down. I kind of show you. This is the black and white of what we're doing. And the reason I wanted the black and white because I wanted to show you something on here that was kind of neat. If you you know really could see it. In fact, I'd like two of these, John, if you don't mind. Just hit oh, another one. Oh, of course. I'm got it right. Yeah. Here. Okay. So. I want you to see that we've got an interesting picture pattern. We've got almost a, what I would call a triangular, some people might call it an arch with the trees. But you've got these trees going this way, and you've got this one going this way. These are kind of leaning. You never want to, you know, if you're looking at a photograph, a photographer's just stuck with however the trees grew. But if you are the kind of person that follows exactly what's in a photograph, you know that with some tree going off that way. And remember, lines all are direction. This is like a play. You're directing the viewer. And then we've got this line across the stream. We've got this nice wide area where the, where the waterfall is and then the stream. 
I don't know. I just thought this was sort of pretty. I was trying to decide what would be neat. And you've got some lines coming down here, kind of, kind of crossing over in this V, where the um, uh, where our uh, where our bank is. Now, what's really kind of cool about this is that in the background, way in the background, you've got these you've got these trees. Okay, these are coming up here, but covering them are these. See, that's not even going to write right like I can do it in black here. Covering them, got to really, sh all right. So covering them are these, all right, there's these shapes that are covering the trees. And then this way, they're going this way. And it's interesting, he changed them, the direction of these shapes that are the leaves covering the trees. And he did them in kind of those shapes, and it, that's kind. That's sort of it's sort of key to how he did them. Okay, these are going this way, and so um, and you've got this nice one big rock here, and then some smaller rocks. Okay, so if you kind of look at our pattern, this is a really cool, cool picture. And you're going, I don't know, Ginger. It looks hard. <laughs> Someone's going to say that. I know that. I don't know. I've never painted before. Probably terribly difficult. I have no idea. I don't think it is, but you know what I. I'm always an optimist, so who knows? Is it, so I've got this 8x10 canvas, it's yellow. And I think I'll just come up here like this, uh, maybe about three fingers, and uh, draw a line straight across here like this, and then kind of do that. Like a little arrow, and then I'm going to say this bank's coming here, about a little bit, uh, about halfway to about there, I've got a bank coming this way. And then somewhere in here, we've got our waterfall. And we've got a bank going this way. And then the rest up here is trees. And then part of this is a nice big nifty looking rock that comes down here like that. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's some other rocks, but that was that's the main thing. Okay. So hey, that's, that's before basically... Before we uh, go too much further than this, we, we would like to welcome our new moderators. Uh, Becky has been promoted, and so has Lynn, to moderator status of the YouTube group. Oh, uh, welcome, you guys. And uh, listen, and uh, th uh, both of you are doing, uh, they're also moderators on our Facebook uh, uh, club, and they're doing a great job. So uh, we, we had an, we have something called Art Show Saturdays, where whatever you're painting, uh, if you're a member of our group, you can show it to us. I don't care. You know, if you can, go ahead. We want to see it. And... Um, We've also got Tanya and Wendy on tonight. Hi, Tanya and Wendy. So, um, anyway, so it's 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 interesting to see what people people paint, um, and sometimes you can be inspired by that. On Wednesdays in our Facebook club, we have a uh, a deal where you can. It's called Workday Wednesdays, and you can uh, post your picture kind of halfway through or part of the way through, and get ideas from other members. You know. Sometimes a different set of eyes looking at that. Somebody has a great idea, or maybe you're trying to figure out a frame. And you know, I, I think we have some of the nicest, most helpful people on Facebook as far as uh, you know, helping other artists, uh, um, you know, expand their artwork. And I, I have to tell you, I was really pleased that one of um, our uh, artists had taken uh, a, a Van a Van Gogh vase, one of the first tutorials I ever put up on. YouTube, maybe you guys remember it. It's a, it's kind of the green vase with the little flowers on top, and she won first place at a local fair. And another artist took the sunflower. I don't know if I still have that somewhere. That neat sunflower we posted on YouTube, and she won first place with it somewhere too. So well, I'm just putting out some colors, some yellows, some browns. It's a dark brown color. Let me see if I can. Well, it's a brand new tube, and it's just stuck in there, isn't it? Ah, oh, there it goes. Oh, man, that really came out. We needed about a third of that. Well, we'll use that for another painting somewhere else. Wow, that really came Anna's plopping out. And is asking, what kind of lighting does Ginger put over her paintings? Um, you know, I read a lot about that. Uh, you know, we, John and I, you just basically want outdoor, you want special outdoor lighting. It's, you know, it's daylight bulbs is what you want. But you're talking about if they're already hung up on the wall? Well, they have special painting lights for that. Okay, um, I've actually never, I always meant to do that, uh, but I've never done it actually. That seems like, it seems like a great idea though. I always admire people that get that far along in their decor where they actually get the lights over the paintings. That's good, isn't it? 
Well, I think I even bought some sometime. They just sat there. Nobody ever actually hung them up. Well, this is why people are exes, isn't it? So, um... Ross would like to know, have you seen the documentary on Robert De Niro Sr.? It's really good. I have not. Not seen it yet. All right, so I think I want some Cad Red. Not very much and of that. Before anybody asks, no, I do not have a picture of what this looks like. You, you get no, to see none of us. We're, we're making created. this as up as I go. I'm sorry. This is not kind of thing you probably even can paint along with because I'm making it up as I go, and I'm chatting with you. This is a last minute kind of a what the heck we're going to do a live show, and I had to come up with something to paint. And I thought this was pretty, so this is a this is as far as I got tonight. This is, <laughs> but you know what? Maybe you're having a day like that. You just say, well, I want to learn how to paint something. Okay, Ginger's going to show me. This is good. In the meantime we're going to talk a lot about picture patterns and, and lights and darks and that kind of stuff. So, all right, putting all this out of the way, and I've got my picture in front of me on an iPad, and I also have the, here's the black and white of it. I think we showed you that without it, and, and here's one with the, yeah, so basically, what you, why you want a black and white is you want to say that the, your eye goes first to the lightest light and the darkest dark. You hear me say that all the time. Obviously, it's going to be this waterfall right here. It's really not dead center. It kind of is, but, you know, we could, we'll give him some slack on that, right? And the whole waterfall is, and there's a little bit here and a little bit here, and then this is the lightest rock, and the others are kind of dark, and there's a little bit of a light here. The light's coming from be behind, okay, coming from this direction. So the trees are lit on this side of the trees, this side, and they're all kind of faded in the background. There's not, it's very interesting. They're just really muted. I guess I, I thought I was very fascinated. One of the things I would tell people to do in a picture like this is to make some greens. Take some uh, uh, um, uh, yellow oxide and some, um, some ultramarine blue and make a green, kind of a, kind of a green there. Take a little bit of cad yellow medium maybe and add to that. Make a little lighter green and maybe add a little raw umber to it and tone it down. There's another green, see that? And let's make a let's take some yellow and purple, a little dash of purple. We've got a pretty good looking green there, kind of almost a brown green. Do you see that? Put a little more yellow with it. That's a different looking green. Alright. It, it, see I've got one, two, three greens, okay? Now if I take a little white and take some of that and add a little white to that, that's a different green right there. So a, a painting like this requires some golds and greens in it, um, a little bit of purple and a little bit of cad red medium. Makes an interesting rust brown color with some yellow would be pretty. Okay, that's almost the color of the water, right like that. That's the water, color of our water. So you're going, I don't know, I haven't seen any water, Ginger. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, there's some water here. That's the color of it. <laughs> just follow along, people. Just, Come on. I don't now. know. And, you know, last question is that we go. So if I'm saying that's the color of the water, I like that. I, I like that. So it was a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple. And I've got this sort of really pretty rich uh, deep brown color. I think I'll put a little bit of more cad red medium in it. What brush did you grab there? I just grabbed a... Um, this is a... Three-eighths? Three-eighths. Yep. And I put a little raw umber in it, okay? Three-eighths like angle from the silver brush folks. Yeah, so... Don't you would like to know, is there a warm... Is there a warm and cool to all colors? I don't know. I have to think about that. That's over my pay grade, probably. I don't know. <laughs> Ask Google. You know? I <laughs> don't know. Alexa, you'd, have to, you'd have to sit there and... Is and, there a warm and cool color to all colors? I didn't think you would. See, she didn't know it either. No, no, no nobody no, knows. That has to be a good Google question, question, though. Yeah, we'll have to and, You know, Google. the thing of it is, is that you've, you know, I'm going to add a little more purple to that because I want a little bit more, I want a darker brown in here in the corner. I guess okay? I need to get a Google device. And, uh, and then we're going to come out this way. I'm just going to put my first layer. Now, I can see now from my drawing, I have to go around this rock here. So here's my, my bank, and it's going around here. I, you got to put some color on somewhere, right? We, I don't know what's going where. I'm going to get a bigger brush now. We're and blocking I, it in. Is there a reference just, picture? There is not. There's not a reference picture. Ask again. There's none. Sorry. <laughs> We're just doing this, right? If, um, okay, so now I want sort of this uh, olive Sorry green that. color. Sorry, but that's kind of how it is, right? We will um, have one up on Pinterest when she's done with it. Um, Won't we? 
Yeah, we'll have one on Pinterest when I'm done with that. So I'm going to take this olive green color and just kind of paint over that to this olive green color. I just, I'm just trying to block in what, what everything's going where. You know, acrylics in painting is all about layers. So let's take some of this yellow color, make a new color. I like this. I like making, we're just using the same colors here, and I'm going to come in here like that. And this is more gold. I'm going to lay this in here. It's a little bit lighter than those. We'll lay this in. I need to block it in because when you're doing something like this, and you know, really, normally I will paint these before you ever see them, okay? But I didn't today. So then you get to see how is Ginger figuring out what to paint? Well, I'm going to come up here like this and decide over this rock. It's, it's a little bit you darker. You see her work it out as she normally does before you guys see it. Yeah, this is how I'm working it out. I want this a little darker in here. I'm sort of blocking this out. First time I saw an artist do that, he was doing a portrait like this. Who, who, who's the ODG on this guy? What's his name, John? Uh, um, his name is, the guy's name is um, John George Brown. John Dr. George, how can you go along with a name like John George Brown? Do you remember that song, John Jacob, Dingerheimer Smith? Yes. That's my name, too. What was that name? Is something? And, uh, I'm I know, sorry, I, I'm not allowed to sing. You said we can't have a singing uh, that's, YouTube channel. That's, that's right. I wanted to do one. I Ellie know. wants to do one. Oh, but I you know. say no. That's right. All right, so we're going to just kind of... You know, chuck this in here like that, and uh, add some of these kind of green tones. And John George Brown, Jacob, John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. That was the song, camp song. That's my and name too. The, oh, that's not the Whenever one. Whenever you go out, you could always hear him shout. You know, people always shout. Hey, wait, wait. What, what does your shirt say? Lean back a little bit. I got to tell you, this isn't this great. To save time, time let's just, just assume I know everything. Yeah. I think that's a perfect shirt for you. It's perfect, isn't it? Okay, so that's a perfect shirt, isn't it? It is. All right, so that's all right. So now you're gonna, and then I think this rock here, we'll, we'll make this rock, even though it's going to be our lightest rock, we're going to make it burnt umber first. How about that? All right. So there's this nice big oh, burnt umber rock. Magic. Let's see what I can. And I think we'll put a little burnt umber down here. It's good like that just down in here like that kind of darken that up now I've got got another little rock here I've got a couple along here again his was much larger we're, we're just sort of getting the general gist of this painting I'm not going to do exactly like his he did because obviously his is larger and he had a lot more detail than we're putting in but you know this is my disclaimer immediately you like it <laughs> <laughs> this is my well right it would be his back. but but I'm inspired by this right I was inspired by this picture and why not right so let's put a little bit more dark brown in here and just kind of well I think it's kind of a up. cool picture it myself. is kind of cool I think it's kind of cool right so it's just it's just it's just different and then um here's let's take um let's see I had something here what did I have I thought I got it out burnt sienna that was it I didn't put it out here but I will put it out here burnt sienna and all right, just for you folks, this is what I'm doing for you. All right, so here's the... Well, they're going to think I'm painting that then, John. If you put the actual picture up, they'll think that's what we're painting. Well, it gives them an idea. Well, it's so small, who can see anything with it? Okay, all right, fine. This is what she's basing it off of. All right, that's what I'm basing it. I've got this burnt sienna shadow remember, right here. we're doing a small... My sister's on tonight, of all people. What? What, she's in all people? Well, very seldom she joins us in the evening. Oh, I like what she says. No assuming Ginger knows all. There you go. Now I'm going to go back and <laughs> forth like this. I don't know. We were having dinner with some strangers the, last week, and um, I got into oh, my art. Art. I got into my art thing. You know how I get, right? And I'm thinking. <laughs> she got in her soapbox. I got in my soapbox about things. Tell us, what do you really think about this and that artist? What do you think about this? And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, they don't know me, and they're going to find out what I really think. Do you see what I'm doing here? This is still wet, a little bit of yellow and white coming back in here and going back and forth and just creating a little bit of a reflection while this is still wet. And then I'm going to rinse the brush and then take this and go through it like that. There. Okay, there it is. There's our reflection. All right, so also all, all good. Now, what I want for these trees is sort of, remember you saw me make this olive green color. What I want for these trees is that I've got some back up in here. 
I'm going to start right about here and I've got this green tree and it's coming up like this and gets skinnier. I'll put a little raw umber with that. There we go. Kind of this olive green. We're only using ultramarine blue here, not thalo blue. And got a little tree coming up here like this. And we've got another one coming here. And he disappears and comes up this way. The trees go all the way off the canvas, please note. Okay. Here's here's another one. And uh, there's these background trees. And there's, I think, probably more raw umber than anything else. And they're coming up here like this. And this is an angle brush, but look how white, look how white it is. It's a five eighths inch angle brush. And look at the lines you can make with it. And look at the lines. And this tree has to be, trees are fatter at the bottom than they are at the top. So if you had the misfortune of uh, painting some that were not quite that way, then you've got to fix it somehow. Okay. So we've got some coming this way, but maybe everybody's going this way, right? And uh, again, we've got some raw umber ones. So we're going to say we've got another wide one here. Harder you push, the fatter the line. If you lift up, lift up the pressure, the thinner the line. And there's nothing like these angle brushes. I'm telling you what, I just love them. Now I got a little bit thick right there. But sorry, I'll come back this way and still straighten that one out. Boy, that's leaning a lot. That's really like the Leaning Tower of Pisa here. So what could I do about that tree? I've got it leaning more than I want. Could I erase it? Why, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course I can. A little bit it's of water. Acrylic. It's acrylic. It hasn't dried yet. The background's dry. It can be a little messy, and I've just erased it. Sometimes what you can do is uh, make a mark up at where you think you want your tree to end and make it where you think you want it to start. Then it's, e it's easier not to get too um, uh, carried away with, the, with something. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, and we're going to put a few of these over here. You don't really see too many over here, but we'll put them anyway. We'll, we'll, we'll put a few here. They're mostly um, in the background, but there's all these trees. This kind of reminded me of the one I did, you know, of, you know, we got that one on the fall of um, in France. This really did kind of remind me of that, okay? So now I'm going to just say that there's some trees going up this way and just imply a few. This was a little burnt sienna. There's a lot of trees. Now, what I want to do is just dry this, okay? I oh, could work. I, know, we I, haven't really solved that issue. Well, you know, one thing I could do, John, is I could, while that's drying, I could paint something else, which is always sure? a good thing. I'll I mean, just we need do to really that. Figure out how to solve that one. Uh, we've got these new microphones. Don't we sound awesome? Yes, they said we do sound awesome. You know, and that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news is I can't mute her and keep me active because we're on the same system. Yeah, that's she, her true. Her mute button's on the back of her back, which she can't really see or get to. Okay. So I'm going to put my glasses on now so I can actually see what I'm painting. It's amazing what happens when you can see what you're painting. Okay, so now this is still wet. but I, Do you got, want to dry it? I mean, we'll just mute it, and I'll, I'll bring the other mic over and try it. Yeah, let's let's do that. I really do need to dry it. If yeah, let's, let's, can, let's, not, let's not mess it up. Let me just bring this one over here. One second. Let me put my ears on so I can see what it hear it's doing. Hello, hello, hello. Which one is it? Hello. Oh, I think that's it. All right. Are we ready to? Um, can when, can when I start trying? Hey, cool it. Okay, you can try. All right, we've got her muted. And I went to the older microphone, as you can see right here. It's my uh, little one we used to work on. So you guys will have to tell me if it works fine like it is. Um, we've got an auction going on now, gingercookauction.com. We'll, we'll show a couple of those people pieces from that auction. We have over 60 pieces currently available on that site. It's going through around the 16th through the 18th of September. So if you want a Ginger Cook original, that will be your chance to get one. Also, well, there's a difference in the microphones. At least there is in my ears. Okay, I'm done. Well, no kidding. We're back together. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just see, that's, you. see, that's an advantage, me being on the same system as you. Okay, so now I'm going to take this big brush. We dried all these, right? We, we, said, that, we said that, right? Yeah. So um, I'm going to take a little zinc white, which I had somewhere. Um, Do you have it? 
I, it's in that jar. That jar has it. I don't know where the rest of it is. Is that zinc? No, that's ivy black. That jar right there is zinc. I'll just grab yep. some of that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to grab some of that. Who would you like to open <laughs> that? Usually I just bang it on something to open it. I just smash it on something. There we go. Or I can give it to John. Isn't that great? I can twist his fingers. All right, so here's the problem with jars of things. You've got to have clean implements to get this stuff out, or you've contaminated the whole jar. This is really sort of a, but I, for some reason, I have a big jar of zinc white, and I'm going to just scoop some out and put it over here because I want it there. It's really for sock full of people. Yeah, really. You, I recommend plastic spoons and just throw them away. Plastic, you know, just get a whole bag of pl cheap plastic spoons and have them for your jars, and just be, you know be prepared to throw them out. All right. So now I think I said I had the zinc. And, um, Ooh, I um, have a sexy voice on the big microphone. Oh, good. Um, all right, so I'm going to take a little zinc white and oh, yellow good. oxide, right? Some people okay. think it's and, good. And then, and the, are you mumbling over there? Oh, no, not me, ma'am. Mm -mm. oh, okay, good. I, I'd hate to think that. All right, now I'm going to just uh, kind of take a little more zinc with that. And I'm going to just... Looks like you're doing a little atmospheric perspective. I, I, what I'm doing is I'm painting all these pictures, all the, this back in the background. I'm just sort of um, painting them behind, painting this behind this sort of off yellow color. And they're all just sort of disappearing back here. Now this does not work if you haven't dried it, okay? So I want all this stuff to be just fuzzed out so that it's just way in the background. And that's what it's, it's zinc white um, and um, uh, Mixing white are very translucent colors, so when you do that, you uh, it's it's a very it, it'll just kind of, you'll still see it's almost like a, trying to paint over something you know like a magic marker on the wall and it still bleeds through. This will still bleed through, and you'll then yet it'll kind of push it way in the background, which um, you know which what is what we want to do here. Then we can take other we can take certain trees. And bring and we can bring them forward as we decide that that's what what we want to have happen. All right, so that's um, and this will keep everything pretty wet. A little bit of yellow here. I'm just going to come on over here a little bit more yellow oxide. And I just this side is going to be a little darker, a little bit, and that side too. Let's just put a little bit more of the yellow oxide in here with that. So these. They're here. You can kind of see them. It doesn't have to be the whole thing either. You can let some of the light areas show through. That's kind of pretty. It doesn't, again, have to be the whole thing like that. We're just going to say that that's, there's our trees are all pushed back, which I think is kind of neat, okay? And uh, where are we going with this? Oh, yeah. So now, now I'm, now I'm ready to, to talk about these angles. Remember, I talked to, told you about that with that one picture that the the lights and darks around these trees. Some went this way and some went this way, which is a little different than I than I normally paint things, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to take a little bit of yellow oxide here, and I'm going to come this way, and I'm going to start making little bits of uh, leaves, kind of coming at an angle of the darker gold colors, crossing over here some of these tree trunks, like that. And they're going to be at this sort of angle. I'm using a little tiny brush here. And um, and then back over in this area, I'm just um, just sort of this is pure yellow oxide now, not doing anything else with it, and you can see it's much darker. And I'm just coming in here like that and creating some sort of foliage here. And we'll do the same thing. Well, maybe with a little yellow oxide with it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, like that. I'm going to come in front of these trees and just imply a deep forest. I thought it was really interesting how this whole forest was implied and then back up here down toward the bottom we've got it uh, pretty dark down here too where our stream is. He didn't fool around too much with that. Now remember the original was approximately a 20 by 24 and we're doing this on an 8 by 10. Yeah, we're just doing a little 8 by 10. I think kind of what we're showing you is some way to get atmospheric perspective in woods. I mean, I think it's an interesting technique. It's not something that, that you often see done, right? And uh, so I thought that that could be, you know, be kind of helpful. 
I might want to just take this tree and bring this one out a little more with a little raw umber. Maybe suggest this tree here, a couple places. So you know you can you can always erase and bring back, right? And um, I'll have some other bigger trees coming here. I haven't done all the big ones yet, so that's probably a couple in here like that. I'm just going to suggest that there's some trees there. Okay, that's pretty good. And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, where are we going with this? Oh yeah, it's gonna, coming back to me. All right. So here's some yellow. Now a color that Daniel Elliott, you know, kind of introduced us to and he suggested we use. This is called a Naples yellow. And Naples yellow is really light. You can add white to cad cadmium, cad cadmium yellow medium and get it. But Naples yellow is a really interesting color. And what it does is like right up in here, like this. You see, if I go on top of these little. Um, Branches. This is a lighter yellow than anything I've got. Now I'm going to just coming up this way, just not on that side, just kind of through here. I've, on the, it goes on the top and touches. And now this Naples yellow color, um, we're going to come this way with it here. And I'm changing angles. That's what was so interesting about this, that he literally changed the angles of this. And you had the darker yellow underneath, the little yellow oxide, as your um, your shadow branches. Remember, the light's kind of coming this way, so you always have something that's shadowed underneath. And um, on all, and we're just doing little globs of paint here. This is just little globs of paint, and we're just saying all this is light in here. And that's so much brighter. It's interesting to me. It's so much brighter than everything that's going to go on over here. All right. It's an interesting it, color. It is an interesting color. And I was trying to think how he got that, but I think that that's pretty much it. And then if I take a little Naples yellow and a little uh, uh, burnt sienna, right? Um, that's an interesting brown. So I'm going to come up in here like this and suggest, uh, I won't think I want some yellow oxide with that. That's a little too brown yet. Deb would like to know, is this painting reminiscent of one of your mother's paintings, being all earth tones like that? Uh, no. She um, was more browns, right? She was in more browns. And, uh, she did, <laughs> this is too cheery. She, she, the, the, no, this would too cheery. wouldn't have been anything that she would have done. <laughs> um, you know, she, absolutely not. <laughs> she, was not a, she was not a landscape painter. You know, she did more still lifes and stuff. Chinese. Then she got into Chinese art after a while. That's what one of, one of her things was. She got into that, and kind of tap some lighter color on top of this and kind of integrate it in here. All right. So we're sort of integrating all of this, which to me is you know kind of fun, right? Now while that's drying, we can be playing with this. Um, I know that I've got some light coming on the top of um, this rock right here. I'm going to just take a little of that Naples yellow and brush it on top of here. Now it's a little translucent, so it won't be as light as you'd want, and which is fine because all this stuff is is um, layers, right? So when you're doing something like a rock, you know it's all got to be in layers. So the darkest part is this down here at the base, but the rest of this is all layered on, and uh, this is where. Some of these greens can come in here too. A little bit of ultramarine uh, blue and um, yellow makes a sort of green color. And the top of these rocks can be a little bit more green. More like a mossy. Kind of mossy. And we'll still have to change those colors too. But um, let's put a little bit more yellow in. I want a little greener color. Mary would like to know how can a new painter who has trouble painting what they see get better? Um, one of the things for new painters, and we tell you that, is that one of the things that you've got to do is um, uh, get understand how the brushes work and how to blend and, um, and and actually be able to mix the colors that you see. And we really, I highly recommend our Back to Basic. We have a series that's like the best deal ever. It's like tw what, 24 videos. 24 um, videos, 12 hours for 49.95. 
and 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 it, it is an absolute must as far as learning how because if you you know when you want to be able to to paint something you want to get the brush strokes you want to be able to do the blending and to get the atmospheric perspective and to be able to mix the greens that you want all these things and that is a absolutely we've had people say they were so glad they got that that really made a difference okay so it's a right, set that you purchase and you download, or you can watch mm -hmm. it directly through the, your Vimeo account. Yeah. But you own it forever. You own it forever, and you can and refer to it often. It's great material. And it's you got, always need to go back to the basics. Yeah. Um, it's well, it's easy. It's it's easy to get kind of lost in in, in that. Um, like for instance, um, uh, well. Blending, you know, I mean, acrylics dry very quickly, so they're harder to blend. I mean, if you have some chalk or something, you can blend, right? Pastels or something, that's, it's easy to, it's easy to blend those, okay? And because of, and why is that? Because, because they smudge real easy, and oil paints smudge really easy. Acrylics smudge till they don't, because they dry, okay? So, um, you know, what you want is, uh, you, you want to learn how to be able to take the, take these, these paints not only mix the colors but how to blend. See, I'm noticing I'm putting in a couple more dark rocks on the bank here. And um, I think he had one in the water here too. I'll just put one here. And just kind of level this one off. Because there's going to be water kind of swishing around through here. And then he had something down here. Um, so that's, you know, it's good, it's good to know how to do that. Uh, that's what we would recommend. And get good brushes. You know, it's very hard to do anything if your brushes aren't good. See? Brushes first, then paints. Yeah. So you notice I'm using sort of a light color now here to be, and I'll put a little mixing white with that. I want this to be a little bit lighter here, and I'm doing wet on wet. So here's a little mixing white coming, or kind of coming around here, a little bit of that showing. I'm just tapping it where my waterfall is, okay? Now all this in here, believe it or not, was um, some sort of weird bushes. I don't believe it. And, yeah, and then up here on this hill, there are a few more rocks, you know, that kind of climb the hill. And I, I can well believe that because if you, you know, when you go hiking in the root, in the woods, where there's one rock, there's bound to be others, yes? Yes <laughs> just, and yes. There's just usually other rocks somewhere, okay? So we've got a few here on the bank. And, uh, Ginger, what is the difference between tempera and acrylic? Why don't, doesn't Ginger use tempera? Oh, hun, acrylics are professional paints. They, they were meant to be like tempera oil paint. Uh, you know, they were meant to be like oil paint. Tempera is like a kind of a poster paint for watercolor. It's just not the same thing. It's for posters and advertising. It's just not the same thing at all. We're, we're, we're talking about, you know, th we're talking about using acrylics exactly the way you would oil paints, not like watercolors or anything like that, okay? I think I want to bring this water in here a little bit further. Look at that. I'm doing it too, okay? There, I just brought that in like that, okay? So, so far so good, you guys. So, yeah, you want... Um, Here's you, a good question. Sal would like to know, how long do your angle brushes last? Well, it depends. If you, if um, they, they can, in theory, they should last a long time. They don't always for me, because I'm not as gentle with them as I would, I should be. How's that? Well, that's a fair way to say. It. If we get a month out of them, we're lucky. You know, they, you know, realize she's doing thirty to forty paintings a month. Yeah. Yeah. So now I've got a little bit darker green here, and coming up here like this, and I'm just gonna. It's the same same greens. But Thank you, just, Carolyn. I'm doing an awesome job. So um, I know, have my fan. I have one. John, you have lots of fans. I do have Let's lots of fans. Let's not start whining this early in the show right here, here, right? Me cool. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, now we're notice the layering is starting to happen here. Now and we're then suggesting. Here's a question from Cheryl. Are the Back to Basic lessons no longer available with the Academy membership? Well, the, 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 these were new ones that we did. This whole set, we have a bunch of back to basic lessons in the academy members that we have never taken. We've never done it. You still have a bunch when you, you join our auto academy. We'll say once or still. We just made a whole bunch of new ones. Yeah, we added 11 new ones to it. 
we added 11 new ones to it and it said and remember when you're an academy member as long as you're a member you have access to the videos but when you drop your membership you do not where when you buy the back to basics um from our in our set from the downloadable videos that's yours that you can keep for you know as long as you need to keep them forevermore so um which is i think is nice i think that they're you know they're really nice all right so right now i'm just sort of layering on little bits of color in here Kind of breaking up this um, tree. Carolyn would like to know, bush. Ginger, with doing so many paintings, do your hands get sore? No, because here's why. Because I paint for my shoulder, not for my hands. Now, where, where my hands get sore, believe it or not, is all the uh, typing I do on the on the computer. <laughs> um, That's you know, one reason you should go on the video packs. <laughs> uh, the video, you know, when I do a lot of uh, computer work, then, then you know, um, I, I'm much more likely to see... Um, a little bit of green here. We're going to come down on the bank here and add some green stuff here. Much more likely to have hands get sore, but really, you notice how relaxed my finger is. Most people paint like this all tight, and then everything gets sore. But I, I paint from my shoulder. Absolutely, the whole idea behind this is paint from your shoulder. Um, that's what you want to do. It should do for sure. You want to do that. Now we're going to add a few little leaves up here. This is still our background. We haven't put our main trees in yet. This is still our background leaves, just putting a few up here like that. But can you see how this is taking shape? Uh, I don't know, maybe, I think so, isn't it? Yeah, don't you think? I love the, how you did the rock. And, um, you know, we just, a uh, little bit of yellow, let's see, we're going to just start putting in, let's try would a little bit of yellow in Kedrich. Would you recommend buying ec economic canvases on Jerry's or Dick Blick instead of buying those from Michael's? which I think Ginger mentioned in the past, that they eat up the paint? Um, we have certainly used Michael's canvases when they've had a sale, so I don't want to be, I, I don't want to um, get too, um, um, I don't know, what, what am I saying here? It just We've done them in the past. If I, when I have my preferences, um, my preferences are um, a better canvas, right? Uh, but if you're just practicing, these, these Paramount 6x8 canvas sheets are great. The small ones that we do and we do the, we do the um, giveaways on. And then recently we were using some, uh, we haven't actually con contact with them, see if they'd like to give us any more. But we were using some Frederick's canvas, and uh, you know, professional grade canvas. And we thought those were very nice. Okay? Those, are, those are excellent canvases. Those were excellent canvases. So, and, and of course, Jerry's makes a really good canvas too. The Paramounts are really, really good. Yeah. They're, they're excellent. So, um, let's see, I want this very dark right here next to this rock. Okay, like that. Because remember, we talked about that. Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And let's just give this rock a base to sit on here like that. See, so we just made it a little bit stronger for him to sit. Ginger, since you're painting from your shoulder, does your shoulder get sore? Uh, no. Well, my neck and shoulders have always been sort of sore. I kind of like, you know, I, again, it's more from the computer. The computer is what really gets me. Um, That's why I try to keep her at the canvas. The computer really is um, um, a challenge sometimes to... Um, uh, putting a little green on here as I'm talking to you. Because, you know, you're... I don't know what I do, but uh, probably what everybody else does when they're using the computer. And it, 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 can, become, it can become a thing to try and um, you know, It's interesting because I don't get a so sh sore fingers or shoulders working on a computer. You don't. And I'm on it all day. I know. Well, you Why know what? That? But one of the things, John, is that I, I use a mouse. I use a mouse. Do you? I didn't think you used a mouse that much. When I'm on my laptop, I use the trackpad. When I'm on my big ones, I use the mouse. Okay, so we're going to do something kind of, let's see, let me just keep going with this here. Are, everybody's with me so far in what we're doing. Oh, you you, see everybody's how, painting right along with you on this Well, one. I mean, they're, but they're seeing what I'm doing, right? You guys I are seeing so. what I'm doing? Yeah. You see how I'm just kind of layering it in? And, you know, somebody said the other day they liked that I explain stuff. I'm trying to explain stuff. I know, but I keep interrupting you, but they keep asking questions. Yeah, but let me at least finish an explanation before you ask the next question, okay? okay if I'm let explaining me know what I can ask I, the next question. Yeah, when I'm explaining something, if you interrupt me, then I've just totally lost my train of thought, and I don't know what I was saying anymore. So that's not helpful either. 
Okay, so just saying. Just an observation, John. Not a problem. Okay, so now I can take a question. When is it appropriate to use a satin medium or a gloss medium in a painting? And Jennifer would like to know. Um, uh, the thing about it, like a, uh, the gloss medium, if you use a gloss medium, you're going to get a glare. Right? You're going to get a glare. I mean, you're talking about, you know, it depends what kind of medium it is. Are you talking about like a glazing medium? Like this is satin glazing medium. I like that. I've used the gloss. I like that. We bought both. I like this better because it doesn't have had a glare to the picture before I'm ready to varnish it. Some people um, like a, you know, a satin, satin look. I think it depends. You, there's no general question to that because it's all, um, it all depends on what you're painting. I mean, that's bottom line. It all depends on what you're painting. So, um. That, that would be the number one thing. What are you painting? Um, notice I'm going to just kind of miss this paint up here. I've got a fan going because uh, here I want some more. Of those. We want to put some more of these green leaves in the background, probably with some mixing white with them. There we go. I don't want those. were a little dark here. See the difference when I put the mixing white with that? I'm going to suggest that there's some green leaves back here, maybe even a little bit more yellow oxide with it. I'm going this way with it. All this has got little leaves in here like this. Okay. This one was all pretty, just all kind of a muddle. I grew up in Washington State, and we didn't have the kind of forest you could go tromping through. In our, You know, we had like five acres of woods in the backyard, but they were all bramble berries and stuff, and you had to have a machete practically to hack your way through. And so obviously you don't give kids machetes. So we, so we you know... It wasn't the kind of woods like in Colorado or places where you can, there's enough open area where you can go walking. Uh, this seems like um, an interesting woods. I wonder where it was that he painted it. should look that up. I think they're kind of pretty. Here we go. We're still putting the little leaves down in here, suggesting some come in this way. Still putting it in. Uh, all right, new question, John. Ginger, is it hard to talk while you're painting? I get in a fuzzy place, and when people talk to me when I'm painting, I just don't hear them. Well, I get that way when I read a book. I can't hear you at all. If I'm reading a book, I'm gone. Sorry. Um, I, it's, it's all right. It's just if I'm doing a certain thing, sometimes I may be trying to tell you something, and then somebody asks me a question, and, and that totally throws off my train of thought because I'm just pretty much focused on all this. Does that make sense? So then it's a little bit different. I'm going to put a little white in here now. But, um, all right, so the center part of this is going to have a little bit of white, a few little white dots in the sky that's peeking through. Just a little bit right in there like that. And uh, uh, I, think, I think I'm ready to do the dark, um, dark brown now with a little bit of red in it. Here you go. So I've got a, a nice tree coming up this way. Okay, that's tree number one, right? Okay, so now you're now we're getting some depth. Here's one here that's sort of in the background. We're just going to kind of... Then we've got a longer one, taller taller one here. It's going to go up here. It comes down a little further. A little bit of... I think I'll put a little... That was a little darker one here at the base. And he had a stump here. I'm not going to put all his trees in. We're going to get the general idea without doing all of them. He's got one that's it's pretty much burnt umber, and it's coming up like this, and uh, going straight up like this. Like that there's a tree. Okay, now you're feeling the depth in our woods because we did this, and then he's got this nifty tree that starts here. That the, uh, the others are nifty too, but this is a particularly nifty one. This one's coming. Well, wait a minute. We got to put a little bit more of this one in the background. Do we? Do we have to do a few more? Yeah, just a couple. All right, because he had quite the forest going here. All right, there's this one. So that's more of a twiggy thing that's doing that. So some of these are a little more crooked than others. All right, so we've got those. I got to say, I really, Karen Larson is one of our uh, my uh, students. And uh, she's been doing great, great artwork with dog portraits. And she sent a picture in. If you guys are on, on Facebook, if you haven't seen that picture she did of, she did this beautiful German Shepherd and she's got all these trees in the background, really, really pretty. And we sent it in for a pack. We talked about 
the fact that you have to watch from the photograph you'll see trees but you want to make sure that you're in charge of the trees not the photograph how's that that's one of the things you want to look out for that came up this week um, all right so here's this one and it's very skinny it's going to come this way and very tiny this way all right so that's there's that one that's coming over kind of reaching over then I'll take some raw umber ones. Raw umber is so translucent that if you want a few, just suggesting a few sitting in the background, which, um, hmm. All right, I'll answer a question, John, John why I'm looking for stuff. Tint B said, thank you very much for the pack on the puppy dog. It's perfect. i got to go find it again. Uh, thank you, Ginger. She was spot on with her pack suggestions for my doggy paintings. She is ready for varnish and heading to the UK. Oh, awesome. Awesome. All right. So somebody says, what's a pack? Pack is our, is our short kind of slang term for personal art coaching. All right. And, um, and what happens is when you're an Academy member, either monthly or annually, you can um, send, send me some artwork. And either it's uh, either an original piece you're working on, say, uh, you know, just some piece you saw maybe somewhere and you just wanted to do it. As long as it's not another YouTube artist, I'll, we'll help you with it. And, um, you know, maybe you saw it somewhere on Pinterest or whatever. It's an old dead guy or it's something you came up with. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And what we do is you send it to me and I do, the, I, I look at it and make suggestions off in the form of video format form. And we started doing this, and it's become so effective. He's got some little stumps here. I guess we'll put a few. That it's become so effective that over there on the tech bear, you guys want to see what a pack looks like. Some of our members, I've done thousands of them now, I think, haven't I, John? I've done so yes. many. I've done so many, but about we have about 10 that some of our artists said, it's okay, you can share my pack with others to let them see what you do, which we very much appreciate, okay? Um, I'll get you that link to the yeah. So we've got playlist. this link, and, you, and this this will give you a, a wonderful idea about how video packs work, either um, and what and, and how and how we do them. Okay, let's see. We've got this. He's this was a pretty strong tree right here. Came this way. Well, this kind of disappears. You see how we're starting to bring some of these trees back out, not doing the whole thing, but just some of them back out. And then we want one going across here. So if you haven't done it, looked at those. Those are so way cool. I'm going to um, put a link in there. I'm not positive it's going to go to the right spot, but give it a shot. It's over there. If you're not a member of our, our other uh, of YouTube channel, The Tech Bear, this is the channel where John explains, you know, answers questions like, how do I chat on YouTube? And I'm using my iPhone. Or how do I uh, do blah, blah, blah. It's all technical stuff, right, that we get from people. And other fun stuff. Other fun stuff. And so, you know, John's got, got some great videos that he, he creates, just very simple ones. And uh, you don't put ads on or anything. We, you know, we're just, they're, they're, if enough people ask us questions about how to do something, then what we do is that uh, John makes a video on how to do it because um, it, it, we have found that if you can ex explain it that way, everybody gets it. And did you know, for instance, that we have iPhones and um, iPads and tablets and Kindles and at best every kind of device that there is because you people want to know how do I watch your lessons I own a blah 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 or how do I watch your lessons I own this right I'm gonna put a couple so we've more got to figure it out so we've got to figure it out now you can see we haven't done too much to this have we and yet you still see um, you still see quite a bit of um, depth in this painting don't you I mean, isn't it interesting how this is coming to life? Just, just very small. And the, this was interesting to me. The guy put a little tiny bit of light spot right there, underneath that rock, which I thought was sort of interesting. And some little brighter, making a little orange color. Here, it's just a little more fall fall colors coming up behind it. I thought this was a very interesting painting. And then this tree here had more of the reddish brown in it. And the, you know, kind of 
less of the dark colors, more of the reddish brown in this tree. It was kind of fun. Uh, okay, where am I? This. Oh yeah, so I want a little bit of orange color in here now. Just a little bit around in here like this. Kind of dry brush that on. Just to make that warm. Just wanted to warm that up just a bit. When we, you know, when you say warm something up, I'm thinking of red and yellow as being warm colors, okay? If that makes sense, yeah? I think I had another, well, I don't think we have, we're pretty good. There were some other trees in here, but I think we're pretty good on the trees, don't you guys think so? All right, let's play with the water for a bit. I'll turn it, I'll pull this up. I've got back here, and it's, it's kind of white, There's it's white, it's definitely white. There's a touch of ultramarine blue in it, but like not nothing. Like it's not like blue water. It's really white, but if you look at it, it's not quite white. How's that? There's a, just a, almost a gray white. But all right, so here's this. And, uh, and it's a, all right, so I'm going to come over here like this. And let's see, where did this one go? Oh, there's this rock right here, kind of comes this way, around these. And, uh, and then it's just little dots. There's just not any white anymore. It's just the only white where the waterfalls were back here, which I think is kind of cool. And then there was like, some, there's a log and stuff. We'll put those, but there's a log. And this has to be... Yeah. Dumb question alert. Is this live now? Are you alive? Am I alive? I yeah, we're, we're alive. live. I'm sorry. Did you not know we were live? <laughs> we're, right now we're live, which is Sunday evening at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. We, we had all these plans. When we left last week, we had pre-filmed a bunch of videos all to upload. And when we got to where we were going, uh, YouTube changed something. We couldn't make any of it work. We None got the of it. first one. We got the sailboat up. Then we went to do the next one. Yeah, if you haven't seen the sailboat, look, here, here, this was last week's video. If you haven't seen this, this is way cool, right? We got that up just fine. And we went to do the next one using the same technique, and it didn't work. Yeah, could not get it up at all. So um, we don't know what that's about, but uh, it was very frustrating. So I'm going to be troubleshooting that this week and figure out what we're doing. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're, th these are all the things that, y nothing ever stays the same. You can't, you can't count on it. Okay, so see how I'm still, you know, putting some more color on that rock. And I'm putting colors on the front side of these rocks. Like that. Kind of lightening those up a little bit. These are all over here in the dark, but there they are. So there's our rocks. And then he had a, he had a log going across here like that, which was way neat too. we got to put that one in. Got to put this kind of mossy log here. It goes back here. That kind of a, something that fell down. Like that. Now, here's the problem. Can't have this fix that. So put the log there so this little stump has to get shorter. Okay. There you go. That stump was too big, can't be there. Um, that has to dry. Let me just dry this whole thing one more time, okay? Okie dokie. Oh, wait a minute. That came out. What came out? Mike did. All right, you're, you're muted now. All right, well, she's drying that. We're back to the other microphone. Uh, what else is going on in the world? We'll be on live tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. That's our normal Monday time. If you have not subscribed to our channel, we'd strongly recommend that you do it because we may do impromptu sessions now and then as we try to build up our library. So you don't want to be missing out on any of those. 
Oh yeah, and our, and you guys, yeah. Um, and I gotta say, the people, uh, some people on our last week, and if you guys are kind of lighting stuff in this colors, um, last week we introduced, back far enough, I can show this one. I can back We out. Inter introduced this painting in our video lesson library for our academy members, and um, I love this. This is a, a one point perspective. Uh, you guys remember the doc we did on YouTube, but it's it's over here now. It's still considered one point perspective. And I love this painting, and some people have done it really, really large, which is, uh, I was only able to do a 10 by 20 to be able to get it done in time, but I think this is really fantastic. And then, that was last week, in case, you, then, then this week's lesson for our Academy members, which is really way neat, is um, our magnolias. And if you guys like, you know, this type of, you know, artwork, uh, um, something a little bit more it's, it's it has some sort of feel impressionism and it's really more on the real realism side you know uh, uh, three magnolias on blue velvet this was um, this was a, a companion piece to one we released earlier uh, which is um, the, the, the the red velvet and the magnolia okay and these are all videos that you can get if you're a member of our art academy and I put them together can they see them pretty nice like well, that kind of no, like this? Can you kind yeah, of see them like that? Uh, yeah, that'll work. So I mention that because, you know, if you, some people say, well, I just don't have to paint everything, and I, I couldn't do a painting a week. We don't expect you to do a painting a week. We have more. Well, 365 lessons, probably probably 75 by now. The thing with this, we don't expect you to do that. We, we do enough different artwork because not everybody wants to paint magnolias. Maybe, and we do a one cookie lesson, or one or two cookie beginner lesson, and we do some advanced lessons every month we we vary the lessons so that it, it's there's something for everybody so just thought i'd throw that out there since i'm you know telling you guys about that now i'm gonna the light's coming from the back so we're gonna tap on a little bit of a light green color here almost white here on top of this log here like that going up like that see that's kind of nice and then let's get a little bit of a i want a little bit of a light going next to some of these. I'm going to put a little bit more light back up in here. Just as, not the white that we just put in, but it is a little bit lighter. And uh, then here, here, here's something interesting. Uh, normally I tell you when you're doing a waterfall, you do kind of like rocks and stuff. His, his, um, his rocks are kind of gold. So instead of, um, uh, what you'd normally think of, he's got just a few little dots of gold to suggest where the water is rushing down. Which, I th again, I thought it was another very interesting way of painting something that, you know, suggesting it was in the water and, uh, in, and water flowing. I mean, I, th I thought this whole, whole um, painting, I thought, was very interesting from that standpoint. Okay, coming around this rock in here like that. Okay. So then, as I keep down, as I keep looking at this, and there was really there's a there was a little bit. We did some reflection in here. We could could we dry brush on a little bit more reflection? Sure. We, you saw the kind of the wet on wet stuff, but we could we could put a little more reflection in here too. Just kind of wiggle the brush back and forth like that. If you do that though, then you have to cover it up with them. Um, then you still have to do the um, the the. The brown going across it. You've got to break up the um, the light lines with some dark going across it. That's the kind of the secret there with that. Okay. And uh, let's just bring this back over up into here like that. There's our pond. So um, I'm liking this tree, but it feels a little dark to me right here. So I'm, one other thing I am going to do is I'm going to put some light on the edge of this branch and. Uh, I don't like how dark that tree feels. It just is so dark. Maybe we can lighten it up a bit. A um, little bit of burnt sienna or something. Just, just too dark a, a line up there for this tree. Sometimes you can get things that are just so dark they're just not nice. And the burnt umber can be very dark, so we're lightening up some of these trees a bit. Okay. All right, and let's see. He had another tree, which was this was kind of important. 
get another one going this way and just kind of up like that and you can cut you just see a few of these in the background so you're not seeing them all so you really want to feel that this dark forest okay now let's see what else could we oh yeah we need some more of the green ones and we're almost done I'll take another question John Zoe asked a question. You have to scroll back up to find it. Okay, I'm going to put some more leaves while you're looking. Coming out in front of here like this, in front of this one. As a master painter, with all the paintings you do for us, plus your own, do you still see personal improvement, or does a person actually peak? No one ever peaks. No one ever peaks. You just If you're peaking, I've known some men who thought they'd peaked. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about painting now. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, no, people don't peak. If you're painting and learning all the time, you should be getting better all the time you do it. All right? And um, absolutely. You, you, you. Back on the Bass the Basic uh, Series 1, that's forty nine ninety five for common folk. If you're an Academy member, you get a 30% discount. Remember to ask for your coupon code before purchasing. Once it's purchased, we have no control over it. Yeah, we can't. So can, we can't retroactively a coupon monthly code. Monthly or yearly, ask for your coupon code before purchasing Back to Basics or any of our downloadable lessons. Yeah, we have a whole library of downloadable lessons. Not everybody. Again, that's one of the you know, they're, and they're really reasonably priced too. And of course, our members all get discounts. They just, if it's a lesson they want, like our village series or something, our members absolutely all get discounts. Here, we've got to have a little dark line here between them. We've got to kind of separate our pond off. See what we just did? Separating our pond off. And he had a little, I don't know why he made it so dark, but he had a little dark something here, which, you know, we'll just go ahead and do. I think it felt a little odd, but all right. And then there's some sort of a little light area right like that on it. And then... So we're just saying that there's some sort of, I don't know what this was over here. It's very vague to me. I can try to show you even here. It's something, some dirt, something. I don't know. Here's the one without scribbles on it. Yeah, and then I, I still need a few little light spots on my rock. This rock doesn't stand out enough. So that's where, this is where uh, acrylics take patience because for the very reason that they, they layer. And each layer brings out another color. And so it's, you don't, um, it takes a little bit of patience. It's not something like a coloring book where you just color it all in and you're done. Okay? Like even this dark area right here might have some edges to it where it's, um, it's a dark area, but now I'll break it up with a little brown. So it's still dark on this the bottom side, but this might get broken up a little bit with a little bit of brown on the rock. And uh, for this rock to show up, I need something dark next to it, right? Wherever there's a light, there's a dark. So I'll just come down here and say, bring this rock down. Now that brings this rock forward, okay? So you've got to think about that because if you've got some sort of bright sun, I see that sometimes. Someone will do a picture and they have some sort of bright um, sun in the background up here and your eye's just going to go right up to there. And, you, you know, in this case, the center of interest is our stream. And um, uh, that's that's what we want. What, that's what we're trying to focus on. And this corner down in here is dark. Whatever is going on in here, it's rocks or whatever. It's all dark. And what he wants us to focus on, of course, is the uh, is the waterfall. That's that's the main that's the main focus. And there even was a little tiny bit of white back in here behind it. That tree right there, like behind that tree. It's a little bit of white coming down here. And then there was a, he had a, a log going across here, right there, but I kind of like it without it, so I'm not adding it. And I'm going to bring his water down a little bit further than he had it, you know, just because I didn't put the log in. And bring it around this rock, okay. Like that. And then he's got little tiny dots of light in the water. Which I think are kind of pretty. You guys think that's kind of cool? 
little tiny dots of light in the water. Now, what's interesting is that there's little light dots, okay? They kind of come out here like that. And then, underneath them, and this is really key here, underneath these darling little dots of light, there's a little tiny dark, dark spot underneath them. Maybe uh, burnt sienna, it's just as dark. I don't know, would it have been easier to do the dark spots and then put the light on top, or the light and put the dark? I'm not sure, having never seen anybody paint. This is what's fun about painting some of the stuff from these old dead guys. Um, like, I, when, I, when I blow this up, okay, when I, when I blow this up, I can see kind of, taking a little mixing white and burnt sienna, I can see, like, right here, he's got... Uh, let's see, more mixing white. Right here he's got, this is kind of coming over this way. He's got, a, he's suggesting a, a rushing waterfall with a uh, interesting, right down in here like that, he's sort of suggesting it. And then the white's coming. This is where the zinc comes in handy. Here we go. I'm going to bring that around. Okay, and this is titanium. Wake that up. I want that light right there. Okay. All right, that's very fun, huh? And then there's this light around here. These little dots. And he didn't do that, but all these little dots kind of floating out, and they're like almost level. I'd like to thank Carolyn for the donation tonight. Oh, that's that. So, that is so nice. You, you know, you can't know how much we appreciate that. If we, if you've been don't you guys, and we we thank you very much for that. We appreciate it very much. As you guys all know, we all this is all something that we um we we buy all our own materials. And last month we scholar. Sometimes what you don't appreciate with your donations is that somebody got scholarship. Probably you donated something, and uh, it, it, somebody's. Uh, you know, got a scholarship um, to our academy. Uh, done, a, done a lot of that, okay? That's kind of a neat effect, don't you think? With the white little dots, you guys think like that? Now, I think what we have to do is do and then we have to glaze a few of them back. So I think that would have been a lot easier to do with the Posca pen, just saying. Um, does an observation that I'm trying to do them like this because some of these are not as white as others and I'm just using the corner of my brush to put the little white ones in and then we'll glaze them back. These little And make sure they're real small. Some of them touch too. They might be clumped together. There's three. He's clumped them and then he's got a few lone wild ones. Okay. All right. Let me dry that real quick and I'm going to go glaze a couple of those back, John. Okay. All right, if she dries that off, again, we appreciate the, the donation. And we see a question in there. I feel like I've actually fallen back, not progressing. How to explain that? Let's see if we can get that question asked to Ginger. Uh, we have a question for you, Ginger, since you have a, a moment there. Okay, I'm going to take some raw umber and glaze some of the white ones back, okay? I feel like I've actually fallen back, not progressing. How to explain that? Well, um, yeah, um, that happens because you might be good at one thing and find you just suck at something else, right? I mean, there's like a lot of different types of paintings. You'll see we'll do impressionism, we do photorealism, we do uh, abstract art, we do all kinds of art. And Generally speaking, there's going to be some types of art that you're better at than others, right? And also, if you've been painting and you just got lucky and you did something really nice, but you don't know why it's nice, you don't know how you got there, when you try to do it again, it doesn't come out because you didn't understand how you did it the first time. You might have come out with a beautiful painting and everybody goes, oh my gosh, that's so fantastic. And you can look at it and you know it's beautiful, right? Because you, you can see it. Then you try to do it again, but you don't know why it was beautiful and therefore you have trouble. 
and th this is why it's so important to understand the basics of painting design when you start where people get into trouble I think a lot of times is trying to design original stuff before they understand um, what it means to you know what it takes to do the um, to do the painting you know what you know how you have to um, uh, uh, really understand painting design composition colors all that stuff and it's just not painting a, it's just not a matter of finding a painting a picture on paint my photo um, remember those were amateur photographers for the 90 percent of them are am amateur photographers that are just very graciously offering you some uh, reference photos so when they're talking about reference photos they might have a really good tree but the barn in the background is just terrible if you put that barn in it's not going to work but you may need that tree as a reference that kind of thing right is that a good answer to that John yes and yes yeah, I believe so so uh, I mean and also just that you, you change styles and you were really good at one style and you're just terrible at another one because you haven't learned that style yet but that doesn't mean you won't learn it okay how's that yeah Okay. I have okay. a question coming up for a annual member. Do I have to renew my annual membership or does it do it automatically? It does not do it automatically. Uh, we'll be sending out notifications to our silver membership people shortly. Letting you know your renewal date is coming up. I want something a little lighter in here. Do you like? I like the reflection here. Don't you guys like the reflection? I want this reflection a little lighter here. I'm going to exaggerate it. Again, I'm going to paint this again. Remember, we talked to you about um, the idea that um, uh, you know acrylics are layers, and I just feel like this just needed bright. I just wanted a little brighter. The other thing too is when you're looking at anything on on an iPad, the painting's backlit, so the painting will may appear brighter than it actually is in person. Okay, I'm going to put a little of this color in here with a little yellow ox, with a little of this oxide, and just warm this up a bit too. Felt like this got a little dark. The problem with copying these old dead guys is that, you know, some of their paintings may have gotten darker over time. You know, the oil painting, the oil may not be as um, um, uh, what do I want to say. It's stable. Nellis asking, does anyone know what the unity color is? What it, what a unity color is or what this unity color is would probably be brown umber. But a unity color is a color that you add to everything, particularly when you, and then you leave a little bit of it out, and then it's, it's, it's brighter. Okay, so here, we've got to have a trick here with the rock here. I have two rocks next to each other, so if I want one side lighter. So the, the, the side, the one next to it has to be darker, okay? Then I can lighten this side of this one. See, right here? Can lighten that edge of the rock because it'll show up because that one's lighter than this other side. Okay, there. Okay. What other color would be used to glaze back if you don't have raw umber? Well, your compliments will always glaze back a color. That's an excellent question, by the way. I like that question a lot. If I had a, where's my thing? I really like that question. Ah. What question do you like? This one. The Which question, question. The question is, what if you didn't? How would you glaze back a color if you didn't have raw umber, right? So I'm gonna go. That is the question of the night. Whoa. So, so. Color. So who asked that question? You have one, what you have won, besides me answering the question, which I will happily do, what you have won is a um, two weeks at our academy. Of, or if you're already an academy member, then you've got a, um, a download coming. Just either a download or two weeks at the academy. So what other color would you use to glaze back if you don't have raw amber? Well, let's look at that. So how do we know that? So let's just talk about that. So um, That's Chris J. Hi, Chris. Well, Chris, here's the thing. If you have a color wheel, which we have some places. <laughs> we have color wheels. We own some. Here. Ah, I see one. 
Okay, so a color wheel, like for instance, the opposite color on a color wheel is your complementary color. So, for instance, if you're trying to tone down yellow, you would add a tiny bit of purple, like a teeny little bit, like kryptonite, okay? And if you're trying to tone down purple, like dazzling purple, we'd add a little yellow to it. The same thing, red tones down green, uh, or, you know, blue tones down orange, that kind of thing. So that's, that's how you would kind of push back a color, okay? Does that, does that make sense? I believe it does. All right. So we there you guys. I'm, I'm adding a little purple in here because purple is the complement of um, of yellow. And I know that it was all supposed to be monochromatic, but I've lost my mind here. And I want a little purple in the rocks and in this water. I'm sorry. I just feel like it could use it. There, I'm putting some in. Sorry. What happened to you? Well, you didn't get covered up. That's what happened to you. Here, this is pretty. This side's pretty dark, okay, like that. This is the darkest side of our pond. And then we have sort of, sort of a shadow under this rock here. It's coming this way. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of painting where you could really just paint on it for hours, but I think we'll just probably call it done pretty much here. I'm going to do some glazing. Like, for instance, I want to tone back that green, so I'm going to take a little bit of red, cad red medium, and, and add to that, and that'll make more of an olive green color. I don't have to use raw umber, but if I added raw umber to it, that would do it even more here like that. So we've got to kind of age that green and put some of this moss. You could spend a long time on this painting just adding moss to stuff. There's even some moss color on this rock here like that. And some moss kind of coming back here on your um, on your picture here. And if I keep, keep rotating it around, and there's some kind of mossy green colors over here. And then what he did, which is kind of cool, he went back and did little light bits in here and broke up his... Uh, plant a little bit, just added some light, kind of, he kind of fooled around with the rocks, like for instance around his rocks he almost outlined them with light, which was an interesting trick, I thought. You know, just gave it a little bit more, and again, this, something like this, could, you know, you could spend a long time on this, but uh, I want to just push this, this branch is just a little bit too much for me, so I'm going to take a little bit of uh, zinc white and uh, it's dry now and I'm just gonna maybe a little bit of yellow with it but like yeah there, there we go Let's find a new place to mix something new spot here there we go that that tree needed to just be pushed back a little bit and now we got some white up here and right in here, there was just some white in the sky that kind of went with this. One, two, three, four stops. Just a little bit of white back up in here that kind of went into here. Lighten up some of these little, little bushes. So many, there's so much color in this painting. I'm just shocked by it for doing just yellow. Does that make sense? There's so much, so much color in it. All right, we're just going to call this done. If I, um, I don't think I'll work on it anymore. Here, let's lighten this up here like that. I will not work rock. on it anymore if I take my brush to the painting once again. Well, I had to lighten up this rock. Of I mean, you, you know, did. well, that's the problem. Acrylics dry darker, so when Absolutely. you, you got to keep going with it, uh, right? Yep, not, not stopping you. No, mm -hmm. okay. All right, but I think that that, I, I feel like we've got the, I think we've got the essence of his uh, painting. I feel like we we kind of we we got the idea of it, um, and, and that was the important thing. if it was bigger, thing. you'd add more details. Yeah, if it was absolutely, if it was if it was bigger, we would definitely add more details. That, for instance, like he's got a little bit of light coming around the backside of this rock, which I'm not sure why. That was just one of his tricks. He just kind of lightened it up like here, and then then he'd put it. He that's a little bright, and then he'd come back here with a little dark next to it. See what I mean? Put a little light there so then this rock. This is a really, I thought it was very clever how all the little lights and dark bits that he put, there were little bits of light going up on this trail too. 
I, I want to call it a trail. It's just a bunch of little yellow leaves. So this is the kind of thing you could fool around with for a long time. But you get the idea. This is how you paint something like this. Is that? I hope that's helpful. You know? Do you think so? Sure. How do you know? How do you clean an acrylic painting that has not been varnished? Well, I would do a test because it depends on what kind of paint you use. Some paints are good, good forever. I mean, you know, I used to paint on shirt my shirts. I still do, and I can put them in the washing machine 100 times and 200 times, 300 times. They're fine. So then, the thing you have to ask yourself then is, um, what's the quality? You of the know, paint what's the quality use? of the paint you use? So, so I really can't answer that question because it depends on what you use. Start with something small and you, water. You know, but I mean, why would you have to clean it? Did you spill something on it? I mean, normally you wouldn't clean it. You just wipe it off, right, with a dusted or something. You shouldn't have to clean it at all, right? I wouldn't think. As I sit, as I sit here still painting on this picture, because, you know, and I'm looking at this going, well, he's had a lot more detail. I just can't put it all in here. I want to put it all in here for you, but um, I've got to just can't. keep... It's too small. It's too small. I want to put it in here. I want to do this big now. Now that this is like what I would call my study, and now I want to put it this in big... Got to break this tree up here a little bit here. How long does it typically take an acrylic painting to weather and begin to crack? It doesn't crack ever. Nope, it's plastic. It's, it's never, never it's cracks. Pliable. Yeah, never, never cracks. So that's the secret. So we glazed that back with these little ones, and then we want to like have a couple of them a little bit brighter. Um, there's another rag. We'll be on at 7.30 p.m. Monday. That's tomorrow. Central time. That's tomorrow. All right. So you see how I glazed most of those back, and then I've got a couple a little bright ones in here. But there. See that? It's just little sparklies in the water. I think that's kind of cute. Little sparklies in the water. Sounds good to me. Okay. So this was called, the title of this picture was called, the Running Brook, 1873. The Old Running Brook. The Old Running Brook, you guys. So I think that was fun. I hope you enjoyed. hope you all list, you know, found something that you know you could take away from the picture, you know, from the painting. And I see one more thing. Can I do one more thing? <laughs> you guys, can we do one more thing? I want to do one more thing. I really do. I've got one more thing. I've got to do it. All right, so here's the deal. He had he had this uh, stump coming out here, and it almost has to go here like that. It almost has to be in the picture. Is that red? Well, it wasn't that red. Give me a second to paint it in, will you? Oh, Shut up. Oh, sorry. He had this uh, he had this stump in here that um, that really kind of broke that space up a little bit. Okay, and it just absolutely needed to. Um, to be in here, and uh, so I just had to get it a color, and then I'm going to darken it. Okay. So uh, I've just felt like that, you know, from a balance standpoint, we still needed that, that uh, just needed that dark little stump here. And I guess I don't know. Maybe you don't think you needed it, but I think we needed it. And I'm going to lighten it up between this picture and right there like that. And it got lit up right there next to it for some reason. Okay. There's some little little woodland stump that was there. And um, so anyway, I felt like I had to put it in. So one more question, John, before I finish this. Nope. Okay. All right. All right, so there's my dark stump coming out of there. Here's my dark rock here. Just kind of trying to balance the darks in here before we call it a, a day. Okay. All right, we're done. Sorry. Have you signed it? No. Then we're not done. Well, that's true. One thing I gotta say is I love these Posca pens. Someone says, "What you know? What's your I mean, favorite?" I just see a question go by. Just a, using Posca pens reduce the value of a painting. Why would it? I have no idea. Hey, I'm asking the questions that are written. No, I mean, it's that's acrylic. the silliest thing I've ever heard. I've absolutely not. Now, a Sharpie would. A yeah. Sharpie would because your paint signature is going to 
and no one would know, but your signature is going to disappear. Posca pens are permanent, okay? And um, listen, this guy, what he did was he, uh, well, who did I see? Somebody, I was watching an artist, and he scraped his name into the canvas rather than sign it. But, you know, you, you, you can sign, you can, pens are actually a very nice thing. One thing you do want to do is do your, at least a finger's width above or to the side. Make sure you have that much because the frame will cover your signature. So that would be uh, something. All right, so I'm going to sign this right here. I want my little dots. Oh, I can do better dots here with this. Someone is asking, is the big yellow in the middle of the waterfall a rock? Yeah, that's what he had, the, these sort of rocks, like this right here. They're, they're sort of rock. Yeah, that's, they're rocks. It must be the sun glistening off the, the top the, of the rock. Yeah, that's what it was, which is a different. I, you know, me, I would have painted it, um, I would have painted it the dark. In fact, part of me wants to just take the, the yellow oxide, you know, the uh, mixing white, and just even tone it down a bit. Right, like that, like this, but this gold color, kind of yellow oxide color. Yeah, that's, um, that, that's what he did. <laughs> that's what he did. So that's what we're doing. Okay? Absolutely, that's what we're doing because that's what he did. Okay? And, uh, you know, and this tree had a little bit more red in it than I had to, that I had time to put in. And this one had, um, wow. There's always so much more when you're talking about colors and stuff. You know, you hate to put out more color, but I'm going to do a little 10 minute thing here anyway. You hate to put out more colors, but you know, when you see a color that's in the picture and you don't have it, then you want to, you want to put it in there. Um, let's see, put a little raw umber with that. There we go. See, there is a little bit of this kind of lighter color on there, like that. And then here, this was a little lighter, right? Like right here was a little lighter. And this is the kind of things you see when you're looking at a picture and it starts to dry. You're going, well, wait a minute. It was a little lighter right there. And then there was this little light spot right here. Remember we had it before and it's gone. Right, right there, there's a little light spot. All, the, all that stuff. You gotta, sometimes you just have to come back the next day and see how it dried and then say, okay, what could I do to it that would be, um, that would be interesting. Um, for instance, like this this tree right here, he actually had when now that I'm still looking at the picture because it's a very complicated picture, he actually had some um, some leaves, right? Some leaf stuff. He actually had some green green um, uh, green leaves, right? That came over the top of this and broke that up, so it wasn't a continuous line on the um, on, on that log, you know, we put it in there, but that log actually got broken up. See? It's just small stuff, but, you know, when you sat there and you looked at it, you're going, okay, yeah, I can see where that was. A little bit over here and here. It's just all of that, and I'm just sitting here looking at this, and even this tree, even this tree here um, is broken up in a couple places. So you don't necessarily see one big tree. In fact, the, the one that I see most is this one, right, like this, but he does... Um, uh, he has that one and a couple others, but I think we're probably, he put another one right here. All right, I'm going to do that too. The, this one is so dark. Do you see this one all by itself? Your eye just goes here. And he has, he had another one kind of next to this log, and it kind of, let's see, where could we put it? Uh, let's Let's see, I, I don't know, it's pretty... Okay, and then I'm going to just, that's darker than I want. Oh, well, you know, I should have left it alone, huh? This is why we dry things. Okay, so this tree bothers me anyway, so we're going to fix that, all right? Because even though it's in his picture, it but goes in... Oh, my eye goes over there in his picture, too, and I don't like it. How's that? Is that fair? Fix her up. So we're going to change it. So we're going to just... We're going to lighten it up. 
so it's not so dark. Okay, that that already is better, right? And then we're going to put some branches in front of it to, we're going to break it up this way, like that. There, I'm liking that better. See, just, that was just too much, right? And the same thing with this one, let's bring something across here too. Too many straight lines going up. There, okay. So just that made a difference to me, you know, and looking at that going at some point, I'm going to do my own kind of Reader's Digest editing on, on a painting like this and say, okay, that's fine, but that really bothers me, so what could I do to change it? I mean, what, what, what could I do that would make sense to me? I'm looking at his going, okay, he wants a little bit lighter here, okay, where, where do we need, some, got a few little light bits right there, oh, that's pretty, see, just lightening that up. Lightening this rock up here. All right. Okay, I'm good. Done, 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 done. Sorry. It does look better though, doesn't it? When you just oh, push that. You had to push that tree back. It just bothered me. It was this big dark. You can see it in the um, in the I picture right here. He it. probably had less of it than I did. I, I his started probably here, but still, it was too much. Oh, so still, your eye just went right there. And the black blob at the bottom. Yeah, and the back, yeah, that went there, so we had to fix that. Okay. But I do like the idea of the stream and everything. I think that's very pretty. I think the whole it thing is, is nice. It's a nice, very really nice picture. Nice painting. All right. So let's get out our, um, I don't have my stuff next to me anymore. Can you hand me the pile of, um, oh. Can I? Yeah. That's your selections, ma'am. All right. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to do a fast giveaway thing, answer some more questions, and uh, I will find something to... Um, uh, I'll go ahead and put the link up on the... Get rid uh, of that one. You know what? I, um, yeah, find something that we're going to do here. Up. Let me just do one thing here. John's putting the link. Um, I'm changing my Wi-Fi. All right, the, the link is on the on your screen now. The gals will probably be posting it shortly into the feed. Again, this is for our live studio audience. The secret word tonight is queen. Queen, right? Yes. Um, also, if you like all these, uh, gosh, I gotta clean my hands too. If you like, um, if you like um, these ten-minute paintings that we do, if you guys like those. Uh, Judith Guitar went over to my Facebook page, Ginger Cook Live, and she's got a thing called 10 Minute Paintings, and she'll tell you where they are in the videos, because usually at the end of one of our videos, she'll tell you where mm, to find... That's in Pinterest, right? That's in Pinterest, sorry, Pinterest, in one of our 10 Minute Board, Pinterest, Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest, and, she, and she'll give you the exact location on the video, you know, the number at the bottom, like, you know, it's in it 34 minutes and 10 seconds or wherever it is. She'll give you the exact link and where it is to find the, all these different 10-minute paintings that we've done. We've done, how many have we done? I mean, it's a ton of them, right, John? A ton. A it's lot. Just, well, we've done a ton of these, and they're really fun. And if you like them, um, you know, we're happy to do, you know, happy that you do. And we're happy to, you know, paint something here. So what, all right, so can I put this out of the way now? Everybody's kind of happy with that? Yep. So it looks pretty good? Yeah, yeah. we're looking good. All right, so we're going to do it. I'm, I'm looking through. When I talk about this, what we do with leftover paint like this, we're not doing a 10-minute video, so John just sort of covers all these for me, and then I find something that's sort of inspiring and, um, and paint it. How's that? So, um, you know, that, that would be, so, let's see. So I need something kind of, what do I want for background? Ooh, that's pretty. You like this pink stuff? That's really pretty, isn't it? That's nice. I like that. Oh, that's a kind you. of a mauve. Color. Yeah. That's a multicolored mauve background. I like that. I could do. I could. I, my imagination can work with that. How's that? Okay. So. Uh, you just uh, let's see. What can I do here? 
Now, John, while I'm drawing this in, I won't be talking, so go ahead and ask me questions. Um, I have to have a question to ask. So right now, the link is on the being shown. Let's make sure you guys are getting into it all right. Yep, interest are coming in, so that's working. So Again, you guys this is are for our live people. What's that? It's for our live studio audience. Once yeah, live again. studio audience. If you're watching this on a replay, the form will not be working. Okay, yeah, so don't panic. And you know, a lot of times we get the comments like someone will ask, Well, I don't understand how you chat and it's you can only chat when it's when you're live, when we have a live show, which is the chat makes it fun because also we're um I think the chat makes it fun anyway. I don't know if you guys think so. Yes. Start off with a with a vase. And oh, I got to say, my daughter, uh, Cinnamon uh, Cooney, the archer brush. Uh, Michael's online is now carrying her brushes. That's a huge deal, you guys. You can't get them in the stores, though, right? I wasn't allowed to. T I knew for the longest time, and I wasn't allowed to tell anybody. She can't tell anybody too soon. So I can't. Well, when can I tell people? I'll let you know. Well, she finally announced it, so now I can talk about it. But I was I was forbidden to say a word, and sometimes I forget what I'm not supposed to say. So she's very <laughs> careful not to tell me stuff, because she goes, "You said you wouldn't tell anybody." Well, I wasn't going to. Then I couldn't remember that was one of the things I wasn't supposed to tell. That kind of thing. Not that I'm making excuses, mind you. But um, let's see. I need my thalo blue out. So, but that's. Um, Carolyn is asking, I have problems painting circles or ellipses. Any suggestions to practice? Yeah, make rectangles and try to put the, the circles and stuff inside the rectangle. Everybody, that's the, I don't know why. You guys all, you know, make dollar bills and stuff, you know, and you, I mean, you have checking counts and you write those numbers all the time. But for some reason, circles seem to elude people. So, um, uh, this is the one thing that people have trouble with, but if you'll make a rectangle and uh, and then try to put your circle inside it. A circle, a, a, a Square for a circle, rectangle for an ellipse. Yes, yeah, rectangle, yeah. So try that, uh, just really try that. I think that would be really fun. You could do that. How do I keep the acrylic paint from drying up when I'm painting? Well, you know, so I'm putting it, everything that's gone flat here is dried up. You saw that, right? And so what I'm painting is, um, um, I, I have the little blobs, right? And um, you could mist your paintings like like I do. You can mist your paints with a little fine mister. That's a good thing to use. Okay. And um, what about the paper towel trick? And then the other thing, too, is I don't have any paper towels to demonstrate. If you give me a paper towel, I'll demonstrate it, right? Um, I'm happy to demonstrate it if you give me a paper towel. Well, let me wander over here and get you one. I'll demonstrate. One, this is a really good trick. The Liquitex rep showed me this one time, and I thought it was an excellent, uh, excellent, excellent trip, trick. Um, there you go. Thank you. So what you do, you guys, look, i got to let this dry anyway. What you do is you take a paper towel like this and you fold it kind of accordion style. You don't probably, probably uh, have a half of this sheet would work, but I'm doing the whole thing, right? Then, then okay, ready? And then you, then you wet it, wring it out, and now you've got this damp paper towel like this that's in a strip like this and you lay that around your canvas and you put your paint on it around your palette around your palette rather around your palette and you put your paint on it and then you know kind of still mix in the middle that'll keep it keep it wet for hours it really works well just the it's same kind of like a stay wet palette you make your own yeah kind of it does work you know and those stay wet palettes do work um, they do work they have a tendency to me to make the paint a little thin so, you know, to do impasto painting or get it thicker, but they do work. A lot of people just swear by them. I think it's, again, it's a personal preference. How's that? All of that stuff is a personal preference. Okay. 
If using an iridescent paint, do I need to use this type of paint throughout the entire painting? No, but iridescent paints won't, uh, they're only good for a few years and then they aren't iridescent anymore. Did you know that? Oh, I bet you didn't, did you? They're, they're very unpermanent. Very and Holbein unpermanent. apparently has the, has the longest uh, um, permanent iridescent paint. That they, they make the, uh, the one that lasts the longest, but mostly um, you do not get um, more than a couple of years, I have been told, out of iridescent paint. Pat Cinnamon and I had a big discussion about that the other day, and she was telling me that one of the things that people like about the Holbein brand of paint is that not only are their iridescent colors just fabulous, but a that, more um, stable. that they're very stable, which is, um, but it's, you know, it's pretty. I mean, and you know, you're painting it now, and it depends what you're going to do with the picture, too, right? Not everybody um, is going to be doing the same thing with their, with their paintings as uh, somebody else. So, L.S. Williams would like to know, why do you put a red slash through your name? Um, well, you know, when you're looking for t kind of a, um, uh, a logo, right? And when I went to France, what, uh, what I discovered was they never, they, they never had a sign that said leaving Paris or leaving um, La Bastide or wherever you were going. They just put, her, put the word Paris and then a big red slash through it, and then that meant you were out leaving town. And the red slash through my name is my personal logo indicating that I'm done with the painting, which is, I know you're all laughing and going, yeah, but you're never done, Ginger, but but that's the idea behind it. That's, uh, that's what the slash is for, okay? So, fun, right? It's just... And I signed it Cook, not Ginger Cook, because my agent felt at the time when I was selling a lot of artwork, that uh, there was a lot of prejudice against female artists, and uh, still is in some ways. And well, just in general, there just is. You guys, I hate to say it, but there there can be, right? Less of it now, but it's it's still there. And so, um, uh, I'm gonna have to get some more paint out here. Um, if I sign it Cook, I'm not indicating a gender. How's that? Does that make sense? So that's why I do it that way too. Where is the video on how to decide what to put in a painting from a photo? Oh, well, there's one on YouTube somewhere, on, on <laughs> photos, somewhere on YouTube we have a photo on, um, we have a video on how to do, um, on how to do, um, Take a photograph and... Well, I mean, it. which photo, you know, what makes a good, what, which photograph by its, you know, what makes a good, you know, which photographs are more likely to make a good painting. But that's a college course, you guys. Uh, that's the problem with stuff like that. It, it really is a college course in, um, uh... In painting, to to, to gonna do some real light stuff here. Um, the painting that you just did, yes, uh, or like a golden sunset, would it be brighter or more muted with a black canvas? Oh, black canvas would be a hot mess. You wouldn't would want to do that with a black canvas. You want the light to be showing. You no, know, it wouldn't be very bright. If you want bright and cheery, you start with the with the lighter colors, oranges, golds, reds. That would be a, that would be. Someone said to, the other day they bought some of that um, gold gesso, right? Which um, Holbein, Holbein makes an awesome gold gesso, by the way. They bought some and they wanted to know what that gold gesso was good for, and I, I would say it's really a good good. Um, Um, perfect background for a sunset. Yeah, I'm going to dry this real quick, okay?
Okie dokie. Before I do my flowers. Okay, we see a question coming up. Uh, will Ginger do a lesson on painting a seashell? We'll ask for that next. Uh, entry form is working. I saw somebody having a problem getting to it. We've got 240 entries currently. So I know it's working. So keep trying it. Ginger. Yes. Robin would like to know. Please do a lesson painting seashells for YouTube. Seashells. I think a lot of people have done lessons on seashells I would on think YouTube. So. I, th I think so. I think Angela did a bunch of them. I think a lot of people have done seashells. Oh, I'll consider it. It would have to be just a perfect seashell, though. When I was a kid, um, my dad, uh, we went to Hawaii, and my dad went to the gift shop. And he bought a bunch of really neat seashells. And then he sent out, his, he and I set out to hunt seashells, not knowing that he'd bought them. And he says, come on, let's go find some seashells. So, um, so what he ended up doing was, um, um, taken the, um, let's see, I've got to get some more white paint out. He, he planted them on the beach and then let me find them. How cute is that, right? I think it's perfect. I mean, it was, I did it for Cinnamon when she was little too. I thought it was such a good idea. Big conch shell, she thought she'd found it. She was all excited. <laughs> now, does she know that you did this? Well, later she knows, but okay. she didn't at the time. I, I mean, you know, at the time. I edit out. No, 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 she, she, um. She, she, but when she was a little kid, she was thrilled with that. She was like four or something like that. Fool any, I don't know if you can fool a four-year-old anymore. They're pretty smart. Not that she was dumb or well, anything. Well, yeah, but they all have internet now. They all have internet, you know. Probably would announce to you that that seashell does not belong in this <laughs> ocean. That's probably what you'd get now. Very yeah. fun. Good try, Mom. Well, I'm I'm sorry. When, when my grandson Spider was... Um, I think he was four or five, and his older sister uh, was uh, losing the last, you know, losing the last of her teeth, uh, you know, ba you know, baby teeth, and so she was all excited about um, um, the tooth fairy, and he goes, looks at her, he said, "You seriously don't still believe in the tooth fairy, right?" <laughs> He's five. And, you know, she's like almost, ten. yeah, and she's going, I, I can't believe you actually, uh, b you know, b you know, believe in the tooth fairy. That That's just too crazy, you know. Anyway, that's what his. So he gave it up early, huh? This is sort of based loosely on, on something Van Gogh did once. This is my uh, background colors. There's a method to my madness here, but I want you to know that it's not as crazy as this looks, right? No, I think it's pretty interesting. I know, I know. It's just I know it looks a little weird right now. You, you got to hang in there with me. I think we have a, actually a lesson in the academy on the actual Van Gogh painting with the book and the flowers, and he has like a green background, something like that, right? And, the, and all these funny um, oleander leaves, or whatever these are, okay? Okay, now. So that's the fun part. So I'm just putting it on. But anyway, yeah, she, my favorite story about honey was that they were some years ago when she was like eight or nine and she's the oldest of the three kids they were in the um, humble having uh dinner out in one of the restaurants and there was this guy looked a lot like you john but he heavy earning um he's wearing shorts in this restaurant it was around christmas but one of the kids in the restaurant not our, my grandkids but one of the others 
uh, spotted him, okay, and said, oh, look, there's Santa Claus. And then pretty soon every, every kid in the restaurant had totally decided that's who it was, that there was Santa Claus. And so then he went around and did his ho-ho-ho bit. Apparently he was used to this uh, kind of thing. And, uh, uh, you know, basically wished all the kids Merry Christmas and all that stuff. And it was really it was very kind of him because the kids were all convinced that's who had shown up, okay? And then uh, on the way home, Honey says to her mother, she says, you know what's great about living in Humble, Texas? And her mom goes, no, what? She goes, Santa Claus eats at the same restaurant we do. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's an optimist, isn't it? Don't you think that's a, just a total optimist? Absolutely. My kind of kid. Okay. Almost done. I have to dry this. You guys are hanging in there with me? So far, so good? i got to yeah, dry this. I've got a few hanging in there. Yeah? Sorry it's so late. Just all these things took time, right? Just a little bit of time. All right. I'm going to dry that, and then I'll finish it. Okay. As she's drying that... Let's get our last entry, folks. Get your entry in now. We'll be closing that form shortly. And get your entry in if you'd like to have this painting. We'll get it uh, varnished up and sent out probably towards the end of the week. Got to give it a few days to dry to fully cure before we put the varnish on it. You don't want to put the varnish on too early. Let that acrylic cure before you seal it. Okay, so that's not completely dry, but it's like almost completely dry. How's that? It's dry enough to do the next step. It's dry enough to, you know, that's all we need. Is it needs to be dry enough to do the next step, right? That's what we need. Dry enough to do the next step. And uh, make sure we have some more. Uh... All right. So where's my yellow? I'm going to put some more yellow out. All right, folks. Finish up on the entries. We're going to change our... Just to remind you, that's the link to the auction website. That's going through September 16th through the 18th. Each piece ends a little bit differently. So if you bid on something, you want to know when it ends, make sure you check the ending time for it. Yeah, we did that ending bit so that... Um, um, yeah, the very first time we did it, everything ended at the same time, and people had trouble bidding on getting multiple pieces that they wanted to do. So we, they're scattered throughout over a three day period. We have a few more things that we'll be adding, adding to that auction, hopefully in the next day or two. Well, the paint on here, you guys, is pretty thick here. Just so you know, I'm putting this paint on very thick. If you can't afford varnish, what does the Maj Hodge Podge do to the painting? I don't know. To call I the Maj Podge people. I would save my pennies and use the real stuff. Yeah. Just, it just you know, a bottle will last you forever. You know what I mean? It's not that expensive. We, we, we're used to talking about Liquitex, glass, medium, and varnish. It's not that expensive. It really isn't. And um, we're not talking about um, anything else. And, it, it, you know, how long, how long, we varnish all the time. That stuff lasts forever, doesn't it, John? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, a couple questions here. Did we say we give discount for the downloadables to Academy members? Yes, for monthly and yearly members. Ask for it before you go and purchase something. If you purchase, it's not retro. No, no way to make it go back. And next question, do you send out an invoice for payment on the auctions? The system automatically sends one out. If you done, if you buy more than one piece, I would prefer that you would let me 
get them combined together so you can save on the shipping because the shipping is the same per piece unless you'd like to make a donation which we would consider that to be yes the auction pieces we try to send out an invoice if you only get one though the system will generate it and you can pay directly from that how long do you have to wait until varnishing uh, Daniel says, what did he say? Three or four days? Yeah, this week. Depends how thick your paint is. So if you're how using golden opens, is, it's a couple of weeks. How dry environment you're in. Yeah. You know, I typically give it a good four days. I give it to three to four days. You know, just to be on the safe side, but, you know, you can... I, You know, if, 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 you're really, if your painting's really dry, then you're in good shape, right? Yeah. So, um... It's ready to go. Speaking of painting on shirts, do you thin your paint for fabric painting? Um, they do make a fabric painting shirts. I've never bothered with them. Because I just use these paints and just paint I mean, I've done, done it forever. But they do make, you know, absolutely, they make um, all kinds of, you know, fabric uh, shirts, you know. I think we're pretty close to finished here, you guys. Let's say that that's, that's probably true. All right, let's go ahead and draw this puppy. John, what do you like better, spray varnish or brush? Brush. I don't like the spray. One is way too hot and humid in, in Houston to do the spray. Too risky. Are golden opens like oil paints only in water base? No. They just have, are the acrylic. That they you work with your other acrylic paints, and they um, they just last. They just uh, stay wet a little longer. You can work with them longer, but it's not like an oil. You can't go no, back they, to a day they, No, no, they just uh, they just stay they just stay wet for you a little bit longer. That's all. Okay. So. Does Ginger honestly just think these paintings up? I told you this one here was based on a, a lot of times I just think them up and I've changed it a lot. This one here was based on a Van Gogh, a Vincent Van Gogh. And, um, you know. Usually she has something that's inspiring or somewhere. Yeah, but this, this one, sometimes I just make them up, absolutely. Sometimes I absolutely just make them up. So we'll just call it, a, we'll just call this one done. Um, it's a beauty. I love that background with it. Oh, you did such a good job painting that background, John. Yeah, I don't get those colors very often. Yeah, I thought the mob was pretty. When Van Gogh did his, he did a couple of books, and he did um, he did a green background. But I just thought the mob was pretty. Really, mm -hmm. I like that. It's a different look. Yeah, John, just... can you put gloss over matte? Yes. And you also want to put matte over gloss. If you want to end up with a matte put a gloss down first. And there's two reasons for that. One, I don't know what the two reasons are. I know there's one reason. If you don't put them, if you try to do a matte, you can't tell where you've painted the matte. But if you put a gloss down first to really get a good even gloss and then do your matte after that gloss is dried, you can tell what you've missed. Yeah. That is recommended by Liquitex right on their bottle, they say do that. But I know you can go back and forth between the two. Does Ginger have all the old masters' paintings memorized? No. <laughs> no. No. I I go hunt them down. I hunt them. I spend hours looking for them. Yeah. I don't have them memorized, but I do. I do spend a little time looking. Okay. So no, I think that's sort of fun. It's a little book and some flowers. And uh, these were his oleanders, and I thought they were kind of different. All right, we have got our entries in. Let's see how many we ended up with. Maybe a boatload of them. But I never really understood how big is a boatload. Well, a boatload in this case is 272. All right. That's way cool, isn't it? That is way cool. Alexa, 
Pick a number between 1 and 272. Your random number between 1 and 272 is 191. 191. Well, I know who the winner is. You do? I do. That's way cool. Yep. I might share that information. I've got a little boo-boo here. I'm going to fix that with a flower. Margo Pritchett. I think I spelled that right. Margo Pritchett? Yes. That name sounds familiar, is it? Why, why does that name sound familiar I to me? I believe she's an Academy member. Oh, Margo, congratulations. Margo, please use the contact us form on gingercooklive.gallery and send us your mailing address. Not just your email address. We'll have that. I need your mailing yeah, address. Yeah, actually, somebody actually sent us their email address. And, <laughs> you know, um, I thought it was cute. I wrote back and said, um, if you really want this, I really need to have a, you know, your mailing address. She chuckled and sent me the mailing address. Hey, right. Ginger, what do you think about some Tubbo Tao giveaways? you have your little sample sitting there? Um, I, are we out of, I don't have any samples sitting here. Do we have any Tubbo Tao's giveaways? Do we few. pack them up? I thought we were out of samples. Of now I've got, I found a little box that has a few in there. So, yeah, we can, we can, yeah, we got, we can do that. These are our Tubbo Tao's, so we can give away some of those. Those are fun. Um, if you're wondering, like, for instance, you see the paint all over my hand, that's these, and this, these nifty things. Um, I'm just telling you, everybody's in love with these because they work so well. And um, they do the job. They just, this is going to take, it's got lanolin and everything in it, and it does leave my hands feeling crummy. And this will take the paint right off. Um, clean house with them, too. <laughs> Shower doors, all kinds of stuff. They were really, but these are just the best. And um, I, we kept a couple in the car when we're traveling, little sa sample packages. That kind of stuff. These are really fun tub and towels. So we're going to give away a couple packages of those to somebody. Uh, who's going to get those, John? Of course, our the person that gets the painting will get that too. That Margaret. Margo. Margo is going to get that too. Yeah. I like the lights on this. Don't you like the colors on this? The blue and the yellow buff thing. I think this came out okay. You did a great job. Uh, Alexa, pick a number between one and two hundred and seventy-two. I'm going to move this palette. 155. 155. Okay. All right, let me just, I want to move our picture over here too, you guys, so you can see our picture for the day too, our little uh, painting for the, of the water. Oh, yeah, that, that, you know, let's not have the cameraman look back here and get things set up and Can you set it up palette. a little bit, John, for me? Because I think that would be nice. <laughs> we'll just get that piece yeah, of ugly paper go. out from let's underneath that. Let's get that out. Let's do There's that. Our let's put that over there. Okay, that works a little bit. Let me back out of Skoshi Woshi. Drop it down a touch. Turn off the auction sign. Are you guys, are you amazed? See, I'm still playing with this. Oh, and I was using it to, um, I actually found some, you know, I had one of my brushes and go. I just had it on there and I was doing this and actually the brush I'd already washed and cleaned and I got more paint off. It was very interesting. Got more actually paint out of the brush, kind of the final thing. TOT winner Janelle Janelle Sorensen. Sorensen, Janelle, oh, congratulations. Can we, do we, can we do one more? Of course we can do one more. I'm going to pick number 10. Nope. Okay, Alexa's been removed. I, I'm sorry, no, nobody got down to the lower numbers, Alexa. Number 10, who's 10? Katrina Freeman. Katrina, congratulations. You've won some a couple. Uh, packages of the tub of towels here, right here. The, congratulations, and um, you know we, you know, thanks for playing. You know, appreciate you hanging in there with us. And you guys, I hope you're subscribing to this channel, sharing it, sharing your, uh, you know, your, you know, put put the, even if you don't have time to paint this now, throw it in a playlist. Um, you know, you know, <laughs> just, just throw it in there. Throw, make a creative playlist. We would have a video on, on the tech bear on how to make a playlist in case you don't know how. And, you know, that's a kind of a nice thing. I mean, we understand that not everybody can donate or help that way, but, you know, you can really help in any of the artists on YouTube that you like if you will create a playlist for the videos of theirs that you like. It's a nice thing to do. And that also it helps you kind of bookmark them when you want to get back to them later because, um, you know, we add a couple every week. And so there's, 
you know, you time that just work. kind of runs away from us sometimes. So anyway, we suggest that. And if you're ever wondering where the videos are of what we've done this year on YouTube, if you go to my Pinterest page, Ginger Cook Live on Pinterest, you'll see the YouTube, uh, the Sorry. links to the YouTube lessons. And uh, not, uh, there's a link and also the picture of what we've done. So from January th to this year on, you'll see all the paintings that we've done on YouTube. If you're trying to remember, oh, what was that one she did a few months ago? I really like that. I want to do that. Well, um, you can save yourself hours. Just go find it that way. Mm. Yes. There you go. All right. Miss Ginger, anything else? Tomorrow, what time? 7.30. I don't know what we're painting. Uh, I'll figure it out and let you know. <laughs> Uh, you're so clever. Let's throw up our website links. There you go, folks, just so you know where we are, where you can find us. And again, the the the, art, the original author of this painting, the original um, person was the guy's name was John George Smith. No, it wasn't Smith. It was John George Brown. 18... So close to Smith. <laughs> um, um, Smith Brown. John George Brown, 1873, an American artist. Uh, famous for his por paintings of children and little boys and so forth and you know young boys and 12 14 years old doing stuff but this was one of his woodland scenes it was just a landscape I thought it was really pretty hope you guys did too kind of different I guess that's what I liked about it It was different and a way to create atmospheric perspective I think we got that out of this lesson how to do that kind of fade some trees in the background and um, create a picture pattern all right, thanks, everybody. Sammy, take us out of here. You and Judy, sing it and dance it out. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.